That's the turbine. One of the turbines for the dams, right? Howdy, welcome back to the channel. This is Sasquatch Prospector. A little bit of an interesting one for you guys today. We're in Cornwall. Uh, gonna check out the history of electric power, Thomas Edison, the Cornwall Electric Railway, various other things. But I wanna give you guys a little view here because it's nice. This is the St. Lawrence River. Um, and this is the Moses Saunders Hydroelectric Dam. And it was, uh, it was built in the 50s, built by the Canadians. And it basically, they wanted to dam the St. Lawrence for power, right? Um, to produce hydroelectric power. You can see the power lines there. And in the process, what they ended up doing was they ended up flooding um, a whole section of the river, kind of heading back towards the uh, west there, um, called uh, Iroquois, like in the, air, in the area of Iroquois. And it flooded all these villages and they had to move them. And so there's all these roads and canals and old, old infrastructure from all these old villages that are underwater. It was because of this dam. It raised the water level so much that it actually uh, flooded everything. And if you watch uh, King's Highway, actually, they have a, uh, they've got a videos on the Long Sioux Parkway and the lost hamlets and villages of, uh, of the area. And that all relates to the Moses Saunders power dams. St. Lawrence power development. It's cool, actually. Well, the St. Lawrence Seaway. So when they constructed the St. Lawrence Seaway in the 50s, the Moses Saunders Dam was a part of that. They needed to navigate locks to get through the river because there was chunks of the river that were different grades, different levels. So you needed to, uh, to move through locks. Long Sioux Control Dam. Iroquois. And before the dam was in existence, there was a whole bunch of rapids on the St. Lawrence that were, that were unnavigable. So what they did was they had a bunch of canals that ran parallel with the river, but kind of went around the rapids. And then once they flooded the dam, uh, there was no need for the canals anymore. So you could still drive past the canals, but they're no longer used because once the water level was raised, the rapids no longer became rapids. And see so the, the timeline here. So last ice age the french exploration construction of the cornwall canal which we're going to look at uh later the welland canal so out here in ontario it's all canals right for navigating the um the rivers and lakes nuclear generating so pickering darlington right i was saying the nuclear power OPG. 500 times more common than gold yeah. and 40 times more common than silver. <laughs> this is what uranium looks like. So I mentioned earlier the nuclear power generation in Ontario. So Ontario has a huge nuclear power generation industry. Um, you can see the nuclear power plants, right? We are here. This is the Candu reactor. is an acronym for Canada Deuterium and Uranium. It's Canadian design that uses deuterium or heavy water as a moderator and uranium, natural uranium fuel. So it's basically the takeaway from this is that they're using nuclear heat, nuclear fission to create heat by splitting uranium atoms, which then heats the deuterium water, which allows steam to be produced to spin the turbine. Nuclear power is exactly the same as steam power, like a steam boiler with coal or oil burning, except the only difference is you're taking uranium atoms and splitting them with, to create fission, which then creates heat, which boils the water, which then spins the turbine, right? Fission is just basically splitting of uranium atoms, right? Oh, look, crank the turbine. <laughs> oh, it spins faster. 
That's hard to crank. It spins faster. Yeah, so that's basically the concept, right? Is you spin yeah. this to spin the turbine. And they're one of the reasons Cornwall is such a big provider of electricity and has such a rich electric history is because um, of this area, like uh, Valleyfield, Quebec and stuff is huge for power generation because you have the St. Lawrence River, right? St. Lawrence River is a natural power source. So these are gates, right? These gates, they can meter the flow. And there should be a trash rack here to prevent trash from coming through. So basically you have a, you'll, you would have a trash rack here that would stop trash from coming through. And then these gates raise and lower those would be stop logs and then a gate. And then the penstock, which the water comes down through, will spin the turbine, which is then attached to a generator, which generates electricity, which then goes to the transformer and then out to the power lines, right? That's the basic concept. And then this is the, this is the draft tube. Basically down here, this, this part here is called the draft tube. And then the exit where all the water exits out is called the tail race. And this is the scroll case. And it basically, you have water spinning in here, right? So you need to, you need to have an, a cavity here for the water to spin. Otherwise you'd be chipping concrete, right? So, but that's in a nutshell how the dam works. So basically gates, penstock, turbine, generator, transformer, and electricity, right? And that's how, that's how the whole, that's how a dam works. Oh, the head gates. That's what I was talking about. This would be your scroll case, your draft tube, your tail race, and then a gate on the other end, right? To meter the flow. Three head gates for each of the 16 generators. 999,444 liters per second. They have ice booms installed to prevent ice from interfering with the dam, right? Because they can interfere with the water flow. So this is a good thing for safety, right? If you're ever gonna go swimming and um, stuff near dams, you don't, and this is why they have these signs. So you have something called differential pressure. So the water up here has a mass amount of pressure due to the gravity and the amount of water that's there. And then this drop causes a differential in the pressure. And down here, there's very little pressure. So if you were to go swimming or diving here and there was a hole somewhere, you would be sucked in or you'd be sucked through the penstocks and into the dam basically because all of this water is pushing against this wall and it's trying to push down through these little holes. So any little holes that, that exist, you can get trapped in. And there are stories of guys that dive on dams. There's a whole procedure to test with like sandbags and sandbag tests and ROVs nowadays, but you'd have to test the dam because there's been stories of guys that have been diving and they've been running their hand on the wall and there's a little crack in the dam and it basically pushes their hand, their hand becomes a seal. And then you can't once, because you have the entire weight of this lake pressing on your hand. And guys have died basically because they can't get out of the dam. So moral of the story, when they say dam outflow or dam ahead, really pay attention to it. And the reason why they worried about this is because the current can change depending on the rate of flow coming out of the dam and the water level will rise as well. So just really like, there's a reason they say extreme danger. Like there's a very good reason for that. You can see, because if you were to go swimming here, and you were to get sucked into one of those gates, sucked through one of those gates, you would basically go through the dam and come out the other end, but you wouldn't be really a person anymore. So just a little piece of advice. Oh, Westinghouse, the Westinghouse turbine. This is Westinghouse's AC power, right? AC power generation. So you've got DC power and AC power. And then this is the model of a dam, right? Penstock, Wicket Gate. But you can see, right, this is basically like that model on that we saw over there, but different. And that's the that's the, the scroll case, the shaft, and the armor the generator, right? And that would be called this is called a stator. And then the water comes out through the dam, right? And then your transformers is where all the magic happens. The transformer basically takes a certain level of current and uses Either upsteps, you can have an upstep transformer or a downstepping transformer. And it'll basically take currents, um, like if you want to turn that, you take coils, and depending on the amount of coils and the windings and various other things, it'll either upstep the current or downstep the current. So they basically generate a certain amount of current, 
they throw it into a transformer and that transformer produces massive amounts of power and then that gets shot down power lines to supply everybody with power, basically. But you can see the lo locating the lost villages. So I mentioned about how that when they built this dam that um, they, uh, they flooded a whole bunch of villages and people lost their homes and were relocated. So this is a prime example. So you can see there actually was a little railway here, right? The, uh, C CNR, CNR Railway, all are formerly known as the Grand Trunk for any of you guys that are railway buffs. But you can see, right, this is all like the, the, the legend here. I'll just give you a shot of the legend so you can see. It's all flooded, right? Like all of these names, these all used to be like, there was roads here, there was like, there's entire villages and towns that they all got East Williamsburg, So, and it's a common thing with dams because you're, you know, you're manipulating water and anytime you manipulate water, you're going to have issues. So the coffer dam. So they needed, I was explaining to some people earlier, you need to, to construct a structure in the water, you need a lot of support structures. So they constructed a coffer dam to block the water off, right? And they basically construct a coffer dam, pump the water out of the coffer dam because the coffer dam is watertight. And then they have a dry area they can work in and then when they're ready to have it be full of water again they pull the coffer dam right you can see these are pile drivers constructing the coffer dam these are sheet piles so they and that's a vibro hammer so they basically they had a hanging um it's got two ge two counterweighted gears at the top and it spins really fast and because the gears are counterweighted it causes it to vibrate really fast and that vibration drives the piles in right you can see they're using a vibro hammer there Probably a friction crane most likely as well on the rig on the derrick um, That's the power pack for the vibro, right? That's how they would control it and you can see there's another another guy driving piles there He's this guy's threading sheets, right? So he's up on he's up on a, a little lift or up on a little platform and his job is to basically thread these sheets in right you have a little knuckle or a clutch there and you basically you basically, you, you gotta line up the clutches and thread it in and you usually put a lot of grease in there to make sure it fits. But this is how you build a coffer dam, right? And this is the, you can see these pontoons floating for the frame, the, the frame of the coffer dam, the support frame, basically. Right? And then this would be the finished product and you can see the pile drivers. So they basically, they build the coffer dam all the way up, right? Until it's a continuous piece. And then they'll pump all that water out and build the dam. It's a very, very old, old uh, method of construction. Just some facts to some of the construction facts. That's dredge, right? Oh, so they can lift the gates up. Look at the breakers, man. 15 kilovolt. 230 kilovolt power cables. This is just all the maintenance basically that goes into it, right? The output transformers, that's what I was talking to, right? This is where all the magic happens. This is how they take a little bit of current and turn it into a big amount of current. 20 to 25 year rebuild cycle. They gotta rebuild all 16 units. Queen, the Queen and Nixon. Okay guys, so that's the one of the turbines, right, that I was showing you. Saunders Hydrodram Visitor Center. A lot of power generated here though. So yeah guys, that was a pretty good show there. Um, you know, it's, pretty, it's quite a beautiful area too, right? Like nice little grassy area. Just a little bit outside of Cornwall. If you want to learn a little bit more about dams and get a little bit better understanding about um, power and how that all works, then this is a great place to come and learn that.